I, I have to confess to being the imposter in the room um, because I know very little about transport because uh, I'm a professor of computing science. Um, and my research really is about intelligent information infrastructures um, and how we can get data information in a form that we can then do clever things with it with AI. Um, and so what I'm going to talk about in this presentation, I'm giving another pres a longer presentation later, but in this lightning talk, what I'm going to do is give you a, a little bit of my perspective as a, as, a, as a technical person on actually working with transport data. So this is a project that ran about five years ago. Um, it was called the Informed Rural Passenger Project. It was a collaboration between uh, people in my group in computing science at Aberdeen, people in the Centre for Transport Research at Aberdeen, one of whom is here, uh, my colleague Caitlin Cottrell, um, but also First Bus. And really what this was trying to do was address this phenomenon. So here is a, a bus stop, a very nice bus stop by uh, the standards of rural Scotland. Lots of infrastructure, but it's missing one very important element, um, information. Uh, so if you're a visitor and you're standing at that bus stop, when's the bus going to come? Okay. So what we were interested in with FIRST was could we take all of the data sets that were supposedly available and could we architect a solution that would help people with mobility in rural areas. So we worked with a, a particular community here in the Scottish borders. Um, why? Well, because First Bus were particularly interested in that area. They were particularly interested in working with Scottish Borders Council, who were, who were the other project partner, and Borders College. And as I said, the, the ambition of the project was, can we leverage the power, the potential of open data to deliver a mobili mobility information to people in those areas. Also, crucially, we wanted to see if we could use mobile devices to not only deliver information to people, but to allow people in rural areas potentially to provide information, to help fill in information voids that might exist in those rural areas. So we were really interested in what we could use the crowd for in terms of not only consuming data, but creating and validating data. Um, and from my perspective, because I'm interested in these kind of things, really what I, I was interested in, could we build an intelligent information infrastructure that was based on really pushing the furthest principles of linked data? So for those in the room that know the, the famous or infamous five stars of open data, this project was really looking at going as far as possible, going really to five star open data. And that meant that we were looking at, could we use uh, URIs, uniform resource identifiers, to refer to concepts in the data, and could we build a data solution using, the, using RDF as a representation? We were also interested in what would happen when we took all these heterogeneous data sources and plugged them together. So we had government data, we had local authority data, local transport operator data, uh, and also passenger data. What happened when we tried to mush all these things together? Um, well, the first thing is there was a lot of data. Um, it wasn't all in the best format. Um, at the time, this is about five years ago, we, we were able to get MPTG data from, from uh, data.gov. We could get NAPTAN data. We had one big problem with NAPTAN data, that from our perspective, we wanted a linked data version of it, and the only version that we could get was uh, either a CSV or an XML format, which was probably two or three star open data. It wasn't quite what we wanted. So we had to do the work and create a linked data version of it. Um, we had to get infrastructure data about the road network. We went to OpenStreetMap to get that because we didn't want to use Google Maps. Um, and we were interested in how would we represent disruption information, you know, disruption to the, to the bus network, to the roads network. Um, and again, we were looking at could we get data from Traffic Scotland, but also could members of the community, people using public transport, provide that data. We also had to try and get timetable data. We ran into a huge brick wall there um, because we could initially couldn't get it. Um, the operator said, uh, oh, okay, then we'll give it you, but you have to sign this, this special agreement. Um, and really, if we'd been trying to build a real open data solution, that would have been a real obstacle to us. Um, and then we were interested in user information, including information about the devices, the journeys people were making, but with concerns about privacy there. And we were interested in what passengers could tell us about their, the, their journeys and the, and the travel network. Could they tell us occasional location information when they were on a vehicle. We weren't interested in tracking them every single moment they're on the vehicle, but could, would they agree to give occasional updates on where their location was to help us identify how vehicles were moving in the network? We were also interested in could they give us disruption reports to tell us when things were going wrong. Um, 
I appreciate nobody will be able to read that. So that is the knowledge graph for part of the solution. So this isn't data. This is, this is the, the, the RDF knowledge graph, which spans everything from transit data represented using the transit ontology, uh, sensing data that we're getting from mobile phones of passengers. Uh, over here, you've got operator data. You've got NAPTAN data. I could show you an even larger version of that, which has disruption data um, in it as well. But essentially, that was a knowledge graph that we could create by using RDF, using our URIs, to link all these different kinds of transport data together. Yeah, and once we had that conceptual framework, we could then create data using that, and we could link all the data together, which from my perspective allowed us to do interesting things. More on that later. So what did we conclude? Well, to build a five-star linked data solution, there was very little actual five-star data available. Uh, getting hold of data was difficult. It wasn't in the right format. We had to do a huge amount of work to actually get the data in the right format. There were lots of quality issues in the data. We discovered, for example, bus stops that were in timetables that weren't in NAPTAN and vice versa. Um, we were ultimately able to build a highly flexible, adaptable data ecosystem that wasn't just designed for use in the Scottish borders, could be used anywhere. Anywhere you wanted to use a, a five-star linked data solution, we had the conceptual framework. But as I said, little linked RDF data was available. We had to generate it from lots of other formats. And believe me, when you spent a long time trying to convert CSV files uh, and text documents into, into that kind of format, that, you know, it was incredibly frustrating. So what would I take home from all of this? Um, if we really had five-star transportation data, we can do amazing things. I haven't talked about some of the things we could do with that knowledge graph. For example, we were able to do automated quality assessments on data. We were able to identify anomalies in, in reports from passengers by comparing them with other things in the knowledge graph. Lots of things we could do, but the overhead in building that solution was enormous. Yeah. Would I have done it if I hadn't been actually in that research project? No. If I'd been an SME, if I'd been a you know, a micro-business trying to build that solution, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have bothered. So I think that was the, the take-home message. <laughs>